Two-time Olympic champion Mahi Drysdale joins us. Now, this Athletes Union slash Cooperative, you can explain exactly what the, what the wording is, but we spoke to you about this when we launched the platform back in May and always had the thought that you'd actually take over the role. Was it a big decision in the end to make or not? Um, not really. Um, I guess, you know, I, I'd seen what the athletes had done and, and um, you know, was was uh, pretty confident once I saw that they were buying into it, um, you know, that, that I was happy to be involved. And, um, you know, they, they sort of came to me and, and sort of sold me uh, a proposition. And, and, yeah, I was absolutely happy to help. It's something I guess I've fought for for quite a while. So, um, no, it's great to see them, them mobilised and, and doing something about it. Yeah, look, I was listening to an interview um, you had with Heather on Newstalk ZB yesterday. And I thought, you know, it's you're the perfect person to be the advocate because, you know, you've got to have the professional and, and, and also achievement record behind you because it just stacks, doesn't it? I mean, and I, I know that you'll probably downplay that, but it means a hell of a lot when, you, when you've got a double gold medalist sitting there doing this. Um, yeah, and I, I think, you know, that's that's been the, the genuine, um, you know, amongst the athletes. This isn't just, you know, one or two that are, are sort of... Uh, coming up and, and complaining this is you know we want some some changes and you know we're, we're sick of of sitting back and, and watching what's happening uh in sport and so you know this is about actually taking charge and saying okay well we want to be part of the solution and um you know we want to fix this and make it better for everyone so you know that's that was i guess for for me it was pretty easy and and you know i guess having that track record uh certainly helps um but you know, I, I I guess I know from the system, and I know how to how to achieve. So you know, that's probably the the most important thing um, is you know, and and that is is key. Um, is this is this is about performance and uh, enabling our athletes to to perform um, you know in a, in a better system. Now, look, I was, I was chuckling away to myself while I was listening to the interview driving home yesterday because Heather asked you about a hundred different times, is it all about the money? And she's trying to sort of paint and try to say it's all about the money. Look, I understand where you're coming from on this, mate, because there hasn't been an athlete's adv- adv- advocacy or voice or somebody that has that power and authority to represent. You've had individuals try and do it. They normally, I mean, it's it, it, it normally costs them careers or it's so emotionally draining as much as everything else. Can you be as powerful as Rob Nickel and the New Zealand Rugby Players Association? Because I suppose that's the yardstick, isn't it? Um, yeah, and you know what what they've achieved is is amazing. So um, you know, I guess uh, they've been you know very supportive in in helping us um, you know get to here. And, and absolutely, we'd we'd love to um, you know I guess follow their lead. But in saying that, we're we're dealing with very different. Um, circumstances uh, all our money comes from the taxpayer or the majority of it does um, you know we don't generate uh, the income as such um, you know I guess I guess our results generate that that government funding but um, you know we're not bringing in gate gate tickets and, and things like that so so there is there is definitely some differences and and we're very much uh, aware of of those um, but you know, and and I guess you know, with Heather, yes, it is about the money, but there's there's more to it about that, and that's certainly not our motivating factor. We we want to get paid more. It's it's more about creating that environment, and um, you know, if that means that we can look after our athletes better, well, uh, you know, that's that's absolutely great um, because you know, I, I know from my personal experiences, um, you know, even the the small amount of money we did get. Uh, certainly helped me um, extend my career, um, but you know I was more reliant on on my fantastic sponsors and and supporters that that sort of enabled me to um, to to keep going um, later on in my life. Mahi Drysdale with us. It's the athletes. What's it? Is it the athletes cooperative? Athletes union. What is what is the official title? Yeah, so we're called the athletes um, cooperative uh, or TAC. For short, TAC. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, the other thing is, is that we've just had, and I heard you speaking about this yesterday, and I just so agree with you. Endless reviews. These reviews of these nameless, faceless people that come in and get paid a hell of a lot more money to do a review than the athletes who are on the other side of it, who might have overachieved and won a gold medal get anyway. Nothing really changes. The 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 administrators who've been incompetent normally just slither off and get a job somewhere else. Um, and 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 it actually can be actually quite detrimental to your career. Also, when you're in a high performance environment like that, the emotion and, and and everything else that is involved with it, 
having a war with somebody from the administration is incredibly draining and there's not a lot of people that have the stomach and the fight for that so do you is is that part of your motivation as well that you want to stand up for some people who who perhaps need it and they can't themselves um oh absolutely that's that's what we're we're here for and i guess you know i've I've tried to fight the system by myself um numerous times and um you know every time it's kind of like what you discussed earlier just just given up and you know this is just too hard and and sort of said okay I'll focus on myself and and go and get the results and so you know I think this is this is a an opportune time and and you're absolutely right with all these reviews and um you know the athletes are just saying look enough is enough um you know you basically uh the system hasn't been fixed um so you know if you can't fix it then then we want to and um you know like let's Let's do this together and, and, and make it an environment that uh, you know works for all of us. So, you know, I think I think ultimately it's a, a very positive thing, and and hopefully, um, you know, if if it all kind of pans out how we we plan, um, you know, sport will be better for it, and and that's one of the defining things is is you know these athletes are sort of saying that you know I want my children and and the people that they're inspiring, um, you know, now these kids to. To have a system that they feel safe, um, you know, valued and, and looked after in, in the future. So that's that's really the, the ultimate goal. Are you prepared for the fight though? Because as soon as you start taking somebody on in court, you've got to realise also that these fish heads that you're up against, I mean, they're not, that turkey's not wanting to vote for Christmas for a start. As soon as you raised 132 people are getting over 100,000, it's so important that you keep banging that drum because also of that 132, there is dozens and dozens of them that are earning over 200, even more than that. 65,000 for an Olympic gold medalist. Mahi, I'm sitting there watching a whole lot of politicians scream and yell and point fingers at the rugby union demanding bonuses for the Black Ferns. And I'm sitting here going, you've got a $400 million budget sport in New Zealand. Where the hell is the, is, is, is the scrutiny on you guys that you earn all this money and these athletes are actually achieving for New Zealand? They're the ones we want to earn the money and not. Yeah, and, and that's um, you know a, a, great, a great point you you um, bring up um you know ultimately are we prepared for the fight absolutely um is this going to be easy no because we're you know we, we genuinely are trying to to change a, a system uh, for the better so yeah that's that's going to be tough um and you know but but we're we're in in it for the the long haul and you know these athletes i guess um in in all this you know what's the worst that could happen to us well we end up with a status quo um so you know, we're very much in that there's nothing to lose um, and, and anything we do achieve um, is, is you know, going to gonna better the, the system for ourselves. So, you know, I, th- I think, uh, you know, we're, we're in, a, in a great position. You're taking employment proceedings against high, high performance sport in New Zealand, so effectively taking the authority to court. So who funds that? Because that's a costly business. I know this is a costly business to start with. So where do you get your cash from? Um, yeah, and, and you know this is this is part of the the issue we have is is, is this power imbalance. But um, you know, thankfully we've we've had very good support. Um, you know, with with Andrew Scott Hellman uh, leading the the legal challenge, and um, as I say, you know, the the Athletes Federation and and um, you know the the Rugby Players Association sort of you know helping out with with. Um, you know, support in, in behind, but you know, ultimately uh, we're we're doing this on the the smell of an oily rag, and uh, you know that that is something um, you know which which is tough um, because you know we're coming up against, as you say, there's there's big budgets um, ahead of us, and and they're going to do everything they can to oh, yeah. to Protect try to themselves. stop this. Yeah, so. exactly, and kind of keep their positions entrenched. What is the crux? I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, and I know that you're going to be very aware of this as well. As soon as you're talking about the crux of the case and what what exactly it is, you're thinking, oh my god, I can't, I'm going to send people to sleep. But you're not, mate. Explain to us what is the what is the crux of the legal case? Um, yeah, like sorry, sorry, I can't really elaborate on on. You know what's what's happening in the, in the process, um, just because it, it is before the courts, and we don't want to obviously jeopardise that. But um, you know, I think really, what is the crux of this? This is about um, you know creating that environment that um, you know really supports the athletes, um, you know, makes them feel valued, and uh, you know is is a, a, a better system, and, and that's that's what this is this is all about. Um, you know, this is the mechanism that we have chosen um, that we think we can we can get that done. Will it be public? Because I know the employment court is public. So, and 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 is it being public a benefit to you? 
Um, as I yeah, as I understand it, it is public. Um, you know, once once we get to the the hearing process, and um, look, I I don't know whether that that help or, or hinders us. Um, but you know, we we as I, as I say, we we don't really have anything to lose here. So um, you know, we're we're quite comfortable. Uh, we back our situation, and and we think that um, if if people understand it, um, you know, they they will realise, um, you know, the, the environment that we've, we've had to operate under. And, you know, I, I think that while, you know, there has been good things about it, um, you know, there, there is a lot that, that can be improved. Mahi Drosdale is with us, the Athletes Cooperative, and taking HP, uh, High Performance Sport New Zealand, to court. Um, so does this, and this covers, like, does this, do you kind of now represent all the athletes and all the sports that are funded by Sport New Zealand and High Performance Sport New Zealand? Um, so initially, uh, our membership is is from cycling and rowing, um, and I, I guess uh, we've we've been quite um, selective around that and the fact that we do have limited resources, um, and you know we want to try to to keep it um, you know quite a quite a tight group, uh, so so we don't have too many variables. Um, so, but absolutely, the intention is is if we can. Um, be successful and, and drive change uh, within those two sports. Then, um, you know, our hope is that others will will want to become involved, and uh, will will uh, we will open it up, and and they can join us um, at, at a later date. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, we've done some of the groundwork to to improve, uh, you know, other other sports as well. So, you know, that that is absolutely in the intention, and um, you know, we're we're absolutely independent. Uh, we're absolutely uh, you know, controlled and and run by by athletes. So, um, you know, we're we're very um, you know we're, we're very receptive to to opening that up in the future. Significant that it's cycling, which has had a couple of reviews, and the the tragedy, of course, about Olivia, and you know the fact that nothing was done after the first review. Rowing's had a review as well. Is that where the frustration stems from? That you know they go through this process, they spend all this money, the right things are said, you know the right bits of paper are shaken, they press conferences where they all pat each other on the back and go, oh, we've done it all, nothing bloody changes. Yeah, fairly well, and I think you know we saw from that second Heron report. Um, you know that, that a lot of the the issues, um, you know, were, were still there, the underlying issues, and you know, unfortunately, um, yeah, I, I don't want to say too much sure, again, but um, you know, it's it's very much, um, you know, there's a there's a band aid applied, um, but nothing, you know, structurally under underlying changes, and um, you know that that kind of um, yeah, I, I guess is is a frustration for athletes and. You know, especially when you see, uh, you know, you sort of mentioned it before. You see people that uh, potentially were were partly responsible, then get a, um, a promotion yeah. um, within the sport. You know, it's 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 pretty pretty frustrating. And pretty um, yeah, heartbreaking you know, to, to yeah. see that. Mm. And, you know, quite often, you know, high performance sports. Um, you know, I guess solution to a lot of this is let's employ someone else. Um, you know, not give them a budget to actually do anything um and you know then they become a an employee who this the athletes again sort of say well, well what are you actually doing here and um how are you helping us perform and and you know that's what it's all about high performance sport is about performance and um you know we won't lose sight of that we've we've got to perform and and create the environment for that to happen a couple of quick questions i'll let you go thank you so much for your time um, have they not wanted to actually sort this out before it goes to court and sit around the table and go okay well you've got a bloody good point here come on i mean let's be honest about this is, have you have you gone through all of that kind of process um there has been a, a process followed um yeah again sorry i just just can't really comment too, okay. too much further right. around that yeah but. i understand yeah the other thing is also just on the money aspect of it you know, the the thing with the politicians is they love climbing all over all the athletes when we're doing well. You saw it with the Commonwealth Games, massive overachievement. Then it comes to cycling. They got no money to send, you know, our cyclists over to the world champs in Wollongong. Yet they had 25 different managers. I counted about 16 of them up at the Commonwealth Games. This is the frustration just as a, as a sports fan. Two quick questions. What are you learning about yourself? Are you a natural lawyer? <laughs> no, not at all. It's... Um... Yeah, you know, I I enjoy the um I guess the banter and and you know the uh, fighting you know fighting for something. It's just like rowing. You you have a goal and you're trying to achieve it and find a way to do that. 
Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm lost in the in the uh, the legal stuff. And do you spend any time in the boat at all? Do you long for that? Do you have an oar that you look at every now and again? Have you given it all up? What's the go? Uh, not at all. And um, I've, I've virtually not been in the boat. I, I had to get in the boat because I, I went and raced 500 metres at the World Champs um, to um, you know farewell uh, Andre Sinek and celebrate his career. So, um, you know, I, I did not enjoy that two minutes out on the boat. I'm unfit. Um, yeah, I wasn't rowing well and... Yeah, didn't didn't inspire me to um to get back in for a master's career. That's for sure. I wish you all the very best with this. We'll stay in touch, but uh, you're doing God's work on behalf of the athletes here, mate. So go hard. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate your time.